Hi, this is Dr. Janine Marie, and I'd like to welcome you today to this video presentation for you. And before I go on to the subject that the video is about and what I'd like to discuss, I'd like to first of all just really thank you for viewing my videos, listening to my audio, and reading my blog, if those are some of the things that you do. I so appreciate you. And I'd like to welcome you to connect with me at any time. You can just email me at angelwings7777 at gmail.com. And if you have questions about any of the topics or subjects, or if you want to schedule an appointment, I'll talk to you about that a little bit later at the, the end of this video. And um, if you just have another topic, that you want to bring up and you want me to discuss that, you can certainly suggest it. Another avenue you can go to connect with me is to go to my website at janinemarie.com and you can put your cursor up to the contact area and um, a contact form will come up on the web. And if you just fill that out, that will go right to my email and I'll definitely get that and address that as soon as I possibly can. So with all of that said, once again, God bless you and thank you for being here. Welcome into my world. I want to talk to you today about a question that came up and it came up for me and I'd like to post this question to you and maybe give you some answers to the question. Okay, is that all right? And the question is, are you attracting trustable people into your life? Deep question, huh? Trust, when I really meditated upon trust and kind of prayed about it, it came to my realization that trust is not always just cut and dry. Trust is something that is a little bit more broad in subject. And trust is something that's earned. It's not just something that we give to other people. I mean, you might say, well, I'm just a trusting person. And you might be, but out there in the world, the way that it is right now, it's kind of dangerous to just automatically trust anyone with the inner circle of your life or maybe the inner workings of your personal life. There are all different kinds of relationships. We have business associates and we have business relationships. We have people who that we just know in passing. And then we have the deeper relationships, those we want to welcome into our life as friendships or maybe we're dating or maybe it's a love relationship and then there are of course family relationships and marriage so I mean there are a lot of areas in relationship in which trust comes into play and those are the deeper relationships that I want to talk about today the ones that we bring into our inner life into our inner circle that we actually share our lives with and what's in inside here we want to be able to do that one anothering with each other. And in order to do that, we have to have an area that we can trust one another. We have to have that safety space, you know, a, a place that's a safe harbor with the people that we let into our lives. So why is trust so hard? Why is it that we feel that we can't trust anybody out there in the world? Well, biblically, when we talk about the world and society, and how it is right now think about this the dividing line has become a little bit more blurred it's harder now to tell who is really shining that Christed light and who really isn't people are not really out there I mean there's a little bit more deceptiveness in the world than there used to be so what do we do and how do we deal with some of the deceptiveness and, and how do we welcome people into our lives a little bit deeper and certainly this is a process I mean it's not really always going to be something you're going to know right away right some things you might and I'm going to give you three things I took some notes as I meditated and prayed today and I want to give you three things that came to me as I went into meditation about trust and allowing people into our lives we need these three things. We need to be intuitive, discerning, and investigative. Okay? 
I want you to take a sticky note and put that down on your sticky note and put it on your mirror, on your desk, on your desktop, write it somewhere, put it on your hand, <laughs> wherever you need to put it to remember when you are fostering relationships and allowing other people to come into your life, remember you need to use your intuition, your discernment, and your investigative skills. So, what do these mean? First of all, let's look at intuition. We have been created in the image of our Creator, of God, and we also have the presence of God within us. God created us as intuitive beings. We don't really have to go and ask a lot of people, can you be intuitive for me? Because we can foster those gifts within ourselves. In fact, if we've lived on this planet at any time and we've been aware and watched some of the things that go on on the planet and around our lives, you know, our intuitive abilities and capabilities have been up, bumped up a little bit because you can't help it. It's an automatic thing that's there that's bred into the nature of who we are as human beings. So when you get that gut feeling about somebody, and sometimes this happens just instantly, you can meet somebody and you know, mm, I don't know if this is someone that I can trust with my inner workings of my personal life. So I don't know if I really want to let that person completely into my life. They might be an association. They might have come into your life because they want to learn from you or maybe you're meant to teach them in some way. But that's not the deeper relationship that I'm talking about. Okay? So if you've got that gut feeling something is just a little bit off, then maybe you need to back off a little bit and take your time. Use your number two discernment. I really believe that everybody has the gift of being discerning. I, I know that there are specific gifts that are detailed in the Bible that, you know, one of them is discerning of spirits and, and that some people have that. Maybe they have it a little bit more attuned than others, but, <clears throat> excuse me, I do believe that each and every person on this planet that will ask God, help my discernment, has that gift because we do have the God presence. Once again, you have God presence within you. If you are in Christ, you're Christed. You have that discernment that comes from Christ and from that relationship. You have God presence that tells you whether or not the person that's in front of you has soulfully or spiritually something that you can trust or maybe mistrust. So have discernment of spirits and have discernment into a person's speech, into their actions. Be aware. Ask God when you go out into the world and you're around other people. Help my awareness because when you're aware, when you're kind of awake when you're around other people, you pick up on things. We do unconsciously anyway because the unconscious world the unconscious highway is always working and operating so you know that kind of taps in with uh, the intuition and discernment of spirits as well or discernment of of actions as well but um you know be aware keep your eyes open keep your ears open listen to how people are, are talking with you and, and their tone of their voice and their body language. Watch their body language. And you know, you could kind of practice with it with this. It gets a little bit easier without looking like you're inspecting people every time you get around them. But you know, it, it becomes easier over time. You start to learn just how intuitive and how discerning you really are. And then the other third thing is be investigative. And I don't mean you have to strip search the life of everybody that comes into your life, but investigation is something that um, we do when we're just getting to know somebody. Basically, you're asking questions about what they like, who they are, what their family is like, what kind of friends they, they like, what they like to do in their lives, or maybe you're just having a conversation and things start to just kind of pop up. Have an investigative mind so that you're picking up on some of the things that are answering the questions inside of you. And then, you know, of course, 
there are a lot of ways that public information is available to people if you have someone that's around one of your children or you know that's around one of your loved ones and you're kind of concerned there is every reason for you to go ahead and access public information about anyone that's out there because we're living in a world that's very very difficult and a lot of really ugly things are happening and you know i don't think anybody who has any sense of knowing about those things would blame you for actually investigating people that seem a little bit off to you or maybe you you just got to know you know what's going on with that person and do i need to alarm somebody and inform them you need to be a little bit careful around that person or maybe back off it's very important to be investigative have your ears attuned definitely have your intuition and listen to all of that but bottom line be investigative if there's any shadow of a doubt because remember speaking of shadows everyone has a shadow side there are things within us and about us as people and we all have it in our unconscious part of our mind because the mind is not just the brain the mind is actually a, a whole lot bigger part of us and that's another topic but um, you know unconscious the unconscious mind part of us um, picks up on things and we all have kind of a shadow part of us that we don't just let out everything about ourselves when we first meet someone it takes time to really get to know a person it takes investigation we need to learn about them spend time with them it's the same with God we want to know about God we want to know how God's love works we want to know the aspects about you know some of the spiritual gifts that we have because we have God inside of us we spend time we meditate we pray do the same thing concerning those who are coming into your life and if you allow them a little bit further you don't have that oh you know I don't know if I want to go any further with this person if you feel like you can let them a little further do some meditation do some prayer investigate your, yourself on your own in the spirit concerning someone ask God to bring things forth reveal to me things about this person that might be harmful or that I might need to just be aware of maybe that person's been sent into your life because you're supposed to teach them you don't know and and that would be revealed later on but you know what I'm saying is take your time you don't need to jump into talking about all of your personal things in your life don't talk about your finances don't talk about your love life don't talk about a lot of your family life with people that you don't know very well because you just don't know them very well that's the issue that's the issue bottom line you don't know them enough you need to know them more and after that I want to just kind of get into some universal things about being trustable and what we attract and basically universal law says that we attract who we are and we attract what we are into our lives and so if we're trustable as a person and we've been working on that in our lives then we're going to attract trustable people into our life because like attracts like we're like universal radio broadcasting magnets okay <laughs> that's the way I think I want to put it um, don't quote me on that or you can quote me on that but it's it's not a technical term we are just like universal radio broadcasting magnets we have that unconscious way and spiritual way of just broadcasting who we are out into the it, what I want to say is atmosphere and basically it is and we kind of attract like a magnet those things that we are inside to us and sometimes they come into our lives and they mirror us sometimes they mirror the shadow side of us meaning 
they tend to bring out some of the ugly stuff, you know, some of the hurt stuff, the, some of the stuff that's been harbored into your unconscious mind and you don't deal with on a regular basis. You know, we'll attract unconsciously people who come in to kind of ruffle our feathers a little bit. And that's for the purpose of learning, basically, if you allow it. <clears throat> that's so, excuse me, <clears throat> I'm so sorry, it's like I'm having trouble getting my words out today. But it's like we attract people to our lives in order to learn from them and for them to learn from us and to bring out things that we might need to be addressed and we might need to heal. Other people might see things in us that we don't see in ourselves and they mirror those things to us so that we can see them if we are aware. And we have to be looking. You have to be looking for it in order to know. So kind of tune yourself. Tell yourself each and every day, I'm going to be aware today. I'm going to walk in awareness. I'm going to walk in the Spirit. I'm going to walk in God presence today. And I want to be aware. I want to know, is this a relationship or an association that's coming into my life because it's teaching me? Or am I teaching in this relationship? Or is this something I'm going to back off? Or is this a friendship, somebody who's dear that's going to come into my life and, and be a lifelong friend or loved one, maybe a marital partner? So awareness, so very important. Trusting your gut feeling, all of those things. We universally attract who we are. And so that leads me to the next step and the next part of what I want to tell you and teach you about is that because we attract into our lives who we are and what we're talking about is trustability. If we want to attract trustability and trustable people, we need to teach ourselves how to be trustable. We work on ourselves first because we're the magnet, right? And if we ever want to endeavor to teach anyone how to do anything regarding being trustable, we need to learn it ourselves. If we have family members, friends, people who are already around us, remember, we teach people how to treat us. In other words, we need to be that thing that we want other people to be for us. If we want caring to come towards us, we need to be a caring human being. If we want God type of higher love to come towards us from other people, we need to exude that out to other people. So whatever it is that we have that's going out from us, people are going to pick up from, you know, that are already in our lives. And we need to teach them from our actions how to be trustable by being trustable for them. So first of all, <clears throat> excuse me again, we're going to look at faithfulness. That's the number one thing about being trustable, is faithfulness. And the first thing that we think about when we think about faithfulness, we think about especially in love relationships, is someone going to cheat on me? Or is someone going to lie to me? Or is somebody going to do some harm to me? And that's certainly a part of faithfulness. But faithfulness, faithfulness is so much more. Faithfulness is being a person of your word, saying, Okay, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to drop by at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning and I'm going to take you grocery shopping. And you just kind of let it go by the wayside. Oops, I forgot. Is that being faithful? Is that being trustable? It's certainly not being accountable. <laughs> it's not being reliable. But just as, as an example, faithfulness is so much more than whether or not someone's going to cheat in a relationship or whether they're going to lie to us or being deceptive. Faithfulness means that you're going to be there when you say that you're going to be there. You walk in integrity. A person who's trustable has integrity and you're faithful. You're going to make sure that you're going to put your best foot forward with everything that you possibly can, and we do make mistakes, to be a person of your word, to actually follow through and be faithful, and someone who is walking in deep integrity, I am going to 
do as I say I'm going to do. I am presenting to you the kind of person that I really am. I am revealing myself to you. I'm faithful in the fact that I am actually going to give you a revelation of who I am by the way I speak, by the way I act, by the way I love, by the way I am trustable. Okay? Does that all make sense? I hope that it does. It's a broader view of trust, but it's so, so very important for us to be faithful people. And being faithful and walking in integrity means that we need to be, excuse my notes, <laughs> a safe harbor for other people. So let's look at being faithful and being a safe harbor. When we're interacting as people, there are going to be times because we're different. We've grown up different. We have had different families. We have had different experiences. We've had different things that have happened to our hearts. We have maybe some hardness or bitterness. There's some unconscious things that are going on. You know, we're all different. We're not the same. And that's what makes it difficult sometimes, but also intriguing. So, you know, if you love a challenge, <laughs> be around challenging people or people who will challenge you. So, basically, when we're conversing with other people, because we are different, we're going to have differences of opinion. And this is a real big one. We're not always going to agree. <laughs> Lately, and if you've been anywhere discussing the things like world events, politics, religion, things that are going, racial issues, things that are going on in the world today, whether it's social media or in person, there's, there's this conflict, you know, of understanding right now and, and different opinions and ideas. And um, I think it's that way with just about everything, even love relationships. When you start to get to know somebody, I mean, we put our best foot forward, best foot forward, our best feet forward when we are getting to know someone. It's kind of a natural thing. We want to impress somebody that we're attracted to or, you know, we uh, want to be someone's friend or maybe we're interested in, in them as a maybe a love partner and, and eventually someone we want to marry. You know, those thoughts might be going through our mind. and. So we put our best foot forward. It's kind of natural to do that. And that's why time is really important. Because over time, a person begins to let down their guard and reveal themselves to each other. And this is something that we're supposed to do. We're not supposed to just put up a wall. And I'm not talking about boundaries. I'm talking about not putting up a wall and saying, you know, this is the only part of me I'm going to let you see. Being trustable is bearing yourself to other people. Being comfortable in revelation, meaning I'm going to reveal myself to you. I'm going to allow that part of me to open up to you a little at a time as I can trust you to receive it. So I'm, I kind of want to get back to having a conversation and, and differences of opinion and maybe um, just not agreeing on certain things. Sometimes we need to understand that we need to agree to disagree. When we're having a conversation, we're not going to agree with every single thing. You know, the Bible talks about, there, there are scriptures that say um, when two don't agree, when we don't agree with one another, we can't walk together. And I think we take that sometimes the wrong way. Sometimes we take it automatically that if we don't agree with someone, we can't be in their life, so boom, they can't be around us. It doesn't necessarily mean that we have to shove everybody away that doesn't, or who don't agree with us immediately on every little thing. So let's look at what it does mean. It kind of means that when two don't agree with each other, they can't walk together because there's no harmony with one another. They haven't come to a happy medium or understanding with one another. Remember, we're called to be ambassadors, which means 
means that we're ambassadors of peace. You know, we're supposed to be bringing peace to one another. We're supposed to bring ease to one another. We're not supposed to bring discord, although discord happens when we disagree. I mean, this doesn't mean we're never going to argue. We're never, not going to have heated conversations. We will. It's a part of learning how to be one with one another. It happens. But in a safer way, and maybe looking at things maybe from a higher standpoint, we want to actually learn how to disagree in a safe way, in a comfortable way, where we don't feel like we're attacking each other. If you're somebody that I approach, and we're talking about a subject, and I say something that you disagree with, and immediately what comes out of your mouth is just an immediate stranglehold on my voice. If you attack me, say things with your words that are hurtful, you know, just because I disagree with you, you haven't created a safe space for me. You haven't created a safe harbor. You're not trustable. See, trust is not just about whether or not you're going to be faithful to somebody. Trust means that you're going to create a safe harbor for that person's heart to be able to be vulnerable and to open up to you because that's relationship. Relationship is not important to us unless we can be vulnerable. We need to be able to tell someone anything. It's a real treasure when you have a friend in your life that you can tell anything to and they're not going to judge you and they're not going to say, I'm not going to talk to you anymore and they're not going to pick at you or criticize or any of those things, but they just sit back and listen and just allow you to reveal things that you are thinking about or maybe wondering about or feeling or maybe something that's going on in your life. You have a treasure when you have someone in your life that you can do that with and they're not going to attack you. If you have somebody in your life that you can go to and you need to talk to them about something that they've done, maybe they've offended you or maybe they've, you know, been mistrusting or maybe they've done something that's caused some kind of breach in your relationship. If you can go to that person and they will listen and be wide open and not judge you or not all automatically take offense to what you're saying, but kind of open their heart and let you in instead of closing their heart and shoving you out, then you have a real treasure because this is what we want to aim for. We want to be able to be trustable, meaning be the type of person that someone can come to and say, you know that thing that you said yesterday? I know that I just let it go by, but it really hurt my feelings. Don't be somebody to say, no, it didn't. That's not being trustable. That's not being a safe harbor. Be someone who says, okay, I'm going to open my heart. I'm going to listen to what you're saying and understanding that you have different feelings than I do. You have a different way of seeing things than I do and saying, wow, I didn't realize. I'm so sorry that it wasn't meant that way. If you present yourself this way, you're presenting yourself as a trustable person. And what you're going to get into return, you're going to get a trustable person in return. You're teaching someone how to be trustable as well. And like I said, it's a glorious thing to be in a relationship of any kind, whether it's friendship, whether it's family, your, you know, your children, your parents, your love relationship, if you can go to that person with anything, even if it means it concerns them, and you're going to be open as a safe harbor because you've taken time to be intuitive and you've taken time to be discerning and you've taken time to be investigative with that person and you've allowed that person into your life and you can open up and be someone who is revealing and also someone who is embracing. If you can do that with one another, you have an awesome relationship. This is what we're aiming for. This is a relationship that brings peace to the heart, brings, it brings peace to the mind, it brings peace to the soul and body, it gives you a spiritual sense of peace and growth. It's a place that creates peace in a household where there once maybe wasn't 
if you work on those type of skills, it's something that stems from the peace that comes from the true peace and love of God and God's presence. And we can actually take that if we foster that peace within behind our walls in our home that we can take that out into the rest of the world because you've kind of trained at home you've trained in those relationships that are around you so you even know now then if you've done that work you can take that out into the world and you can pick up on who's trustable you can be trustable for other people you can be very discerning because you've done the work yourself so you know what it looks like. You know what God has taught to you about what higher love is and what it isn't. Okay, higher love doesn't mean you accept every bad thing about a human being that they put out there. There are a lot of people out there that are very destructive, that can be very harmful for you, and we live in a very volatile place where there are you know, I don't, I don't want to go into all the negativity, you know, but we have some really horrible things that are happening out in that world. You cannot be higher love to those people when they're operating in a different way. They're, they've got that shadow side that's taken over. They're operating in a different spirit. And it's not God presence. <laughs> you know, it just isn't. So you don't want to just welcome those people into your life automatically. We need to keep a good healthy distance from those where we either have that gut feeling or we've investigated and we have found things that we don't believe are um, in integrity. They're not integrity in our lives and, and they cross our boundaries. We need to have boundaries and that's you know a whole other topic but within the, the context of being trustable and trusting others, some of the boundaries are you know Trust your own instincts and trust what God is speaking to you because your God presence, God who is within you, is trustable. God is our creator, the one who knows us better than anybody else. And the one, he, God is our go-to. He is our father. He is our creator. He is the one that we go to for answers for anything. And the answers that you receive from God are going to always be trustable. So always check everything with your God presence that's inside of you. You have a Christed light that lives inside of you. Work on your life, work on your insides so that your outer life can reflect what's on the inside. If you don't work on it, the outer life is gonna reflect the shadow side. It's gonna reflect some of the things that we have pressed down, that we haven't dealt with maybe in our lives, things that come from our unconscious part of our mind that are trying to filter their way through and they're supposed to do that because we're supposed to learn from them. They're teaching you. They're, they're trying to heal you. They're trying to bring themselves forth so that you can look at those things in a mindful way and allow healing to take place. You can take those things to God and allow healing to happen. Anyway, I think that it's just so important that we walk with peace as much as we possibly can and I know how easy it is to become unpeaceful <laughs> to become stressed out full of anxiety deal with depression have oppression in my life feel like you can't speak certain things you know, have you ever been around somebody that, you know, they're just so jumpy about every little thing that you can't speak anything and it kind of shuts you down? It starts to be oppressed. You know, it's like you suppress things, thoughts and feelings and emotions, and they turn into depression. So, you know, I've kind of gotten into a little bit of that to show you just how important it is. And just not a safety issue, but a health issue as well. You have anxiety that's always inside of you, you're always stressed out, or if you're feeling depressed, it affects every part of you. It affects your mind, it affects your moods, it affects your heart, your emotions, and your body, and spiritually, you're kind of out of whack. <clears throat> Excuse me. Apparently my throat's out of whack today. But I think you understand what I'm saying, is that 
You need to work on yourself. Be the things in your life that you want to see come into your life. So be the kind of person that you want to have into your life. Treat others as you want to be treated. Do unto others as you want others to do unto you. If you want to be a trustable person and reach out to others and show them how to be trustable, that's awesome. But also be discerning and allow trustable people into your life. Allow them into the safe harbor that God has given to you. He has a God presence that's inside of you. You need to introduce yourself to your God presence if you haven't met already. Hello, God. <laughs> Good morning. I want to get to know you. I want to know your ways because I want to walk in those ways. I want my life to be a reflection of your Christed light and who you are on this planet. It's an awesome thing. It's a lot, but it's worth it. And you have a lifetime to do it, but do it now because some people's lifetimes are shorter than others and they're meant to be that way. So start today. Start now working on being a trustable human being. Start working on being a safe harbor it's not easy sometimes when we've been mistreated a lot. We start to build up these barriers and we need to be a safe person also to allow other people to let their barriers be torn down. If we can do that for one another, you've become not just an ambassador of peace, but you've, you've become a healer in this world if you will be a safe harbor for other people. Be faithful. Be a person that people can come to and say, I can trust that person to be honoring to me and not dishonoring. And they're not going to choke my throat or, or bite my head off because I disagree. Let conversation come to a place where two can come together and walk together. That's being a peacemaker in this world. It's being a peacemaker in your relationships. It's being a peacemaker in your family. It's being a peacemaker for your own self. So, awesome thing. I said a lot. <laughs> Hopefully, I've spoken about 37 minutes. It's probably why my throat is a little bit hoarse. Sometimes when you start doing a video, I know that, you know, I'll make a few mistakes and I'll go, oh, or, or the cat will come in and she'll sneeze and need my attention and, and want to be fed and all those things. So, sometimes I'll do these a few times and then by the time I'm doing the last version, my throat's just about had it, and so I'm a little hoarse, so pardon me for that. If you want to get to know me a little bit more, I welcome you into my world. I'd love to get to know who you are. Um, if you need a session, and because I am a, um, not just a spiritual counselor, but I'm a life coach, I use um, a process that's called it's a form of mindfulness, but it's focus, acceptance, um, and commitment theory or therapy. I am not a clinical therapist, but I do use like a, a type of focus, acceptance, and commitment type of a, a thing so you can be accountable and maybe you can um, come and structure certain portions of your life where you can say, okay, I accept that things are like this right now but I'm going to make a commitment to make these changes. And what we do is we walk through the steps in order to get you from this place to another place. That's life coaching. When we do spiritual coaching, I operate in the realm of spiritual psychology or transpersonal psychology. And that's where my doctoral degree is, is in spiritual counseling. And that means I use a form of universal law. I use some biblical things. I use metaphysics. I'm a metaphysical practitioner. I go into a lot of different things that are very safe, energetic, um, teachable. You know, I can teach you how to, to make some changes that are awesome in your life that will improve your life. And, you know, sometimes it's a process and sometimes it's just very simple. Maybe a simple adjustment that might be needed. If you need somebody who you need to pray with, I'm definitely a go-to person for that. So I can pray for you and uh, 
um, you can make an appointment to do that with me at, at any time. I love to do that with you. With all of that said, go and see my blog, The Power of a Confident Woman. You can look it up on Google. Just put in a Google search, The Power of a Confident Woman, Janine Marie, or Dr. Janine Marie, and it will come up on Google, and you can subscribe to my blog and read through all of it. You can go on my YouTube channel. This video will be there. So many others will be there. You can go to JanineMarie.com. There is an audio and video section. You can go to that area and you can watch them over and over again or just share them with other people if you'd like to do that. So those are available. And now what's up with Dr. Janine? <laughs> Here comes an interesting part of my life. It's a shift. I made some prayerful decisions, some new decisions. I went through a period of maybe, I guess about three weeks, a little testimony here, where I really was seeking God and I felt like I really wasn't hearing God. And, you know, I was seeking God on the outside, which is something I know that I don't just do. <laughs> God's on the outside, but I know God's here on the inside. And I needed this meeting of the higher mind, I guess, so to speak, I needed to really hear where the passion was going to be in this next phase of my life. And part of that was to actually obtain my PhD, my doctorate in transpersonal or spiritual psychology. I have other degrees in psychology. I have other degrees in theology. So I have studied applied theology. I have studied systematic theology. I am a a biblical counselor. I have a degree in biblical counseling and a degree in psychology. And now I am putting it all together and my doctorate, my PhD, is in spiritual psychology or spiritual counseling. So I'm very excited about that. My dissertation is on dream interpretation and Jungian psychology and some of the things that are surrounding interpreting our dreams and things that come through our unconscious mind. Very interesting stuff, stuff that you need to learn about and I'm going to be bringing forth some information about dream interpretation very, very shortly. Hopefully, if you're local, you can do some classes with me. If you want to do some dream interpretation sessions, I'd love to do that. It's a process, but there are some really easy steps that you can go through that can actually help you glean a lot from your dreams. Dreams seem very mysterious, but they're not as mysterious as you think. They're presenting healing to you. They're presenting guidance to you, and sometimes higher guidance. So it can be real exciting to see what your dreams have to say about you and your life, about God, about life and love and all of the things above. Maybe after listening to this video, your dreams will be about trust. <laughs> I hope that they will be. I hope that you've learned something. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at any time. If you need to schedule an appointment, I have a scheduler that's also on my website at JanineMarie.com or you can call me at 832-484-8306. I can do video. I can do email sessions. I can do I also can do, like on Facebook, has a video component to it. I can do sessions there as well. And I can do sessions in person. I love to see you. So, with all of that said, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day or night, whichever time you happen to be viewing. And sweet dreams to you. And I hope you glean a great deal from them. And if you don't, if you're confused, I'd like to help you with those things too. So, God bless you. I love you from here. Bye-bye.